All right, hopefully you can see this. I potentially have misplaced my tripod, so bear with me, you get to see my awesome zebra socks. Um, but anyway, so I'm gonna continue to work on Wonka uh, with the e-collar. I'm just gonna do the exact same thing as yesterday. Um, so hopefully we'll see some difference um, in his response time. Come on, buddy. <laughs> I also have the sound box paired. Now that you kind of know what I'm doing, I'm going to probably talk a little less. Oh, look at that. Good job. Good job. So I tried to, I wanted to see what he would do without, if I gave him uh, e-collar pressure and then didn't immediately give him leash pressure, see what he would do. So he's starting to anticipate a little bit. There, good job. So he's anticipating a little bit and that's okay. And that's, this is kind of a concept that you use with horses too. So for example, this might not make sense to people who don't have horses, but um, so one of the more complicated, one of the more complicated things to teach a horse is a flying lead change. So, that's a, it's a, how do I explain this to people who don't know horses? Um, it's essentially, you're asking the horse to change the way it's moving by flipping which leg it's leading with at a certain gait. So at a canter to the right, the front right leg is going to lead, so go the farthest out. When you canter to the left on the left leg, the front left lead leg is leading. So in a flying lead change, you change that at a flying pace. So you're cantering along and then you ask them to change what lead they're on. And that's kind of a complicated thing to teach. Um, it's, it, well, it's very straightforward to teach, but it's hard for the horse to really get solid. So long story short, you kind of can use the anticipation. Um, so if you do a figure eight, figure eight, figure eight, 
and at the center of the figure eight, you ask for flying lead change every time, they will start to anticipate that. And you might think that it's bad that they're anticipating because they're making the decision on their own. But as long as you pair that anticipation, as long as you pair when they do it on their own with the correct cue, you're only helping them learn the correct cue by letting them anticipate in the very beginning. So once the horse understands it, then you can, there you go, then you can hold them accountable uh, for only doing it when you ask them to. But you work with the anticipation in the beginning to get the command solid. Good, right there, buddy. So you work with the you work with the anticipation in the beginning to get the command solid, um, but then you you uh, you pair that command once the anticipation has kind of worked in your favor. You can use it without needing to use the anticipation, if that makes sense. There you go, good job. See, he's learning, he's learning. You missed one. There you go. You missed it again. There you go. So I'm trying to kind of walk lightly so he doesn't feel my feet, like feel the, the footsteps vibrations. So he's kind of more relying on the leash pressure. Yay, good job. So right now he's kind of learning to find the food in response to the um, to the e-collar pressure, but that's okay. Good job, because the owner's holding the food. I'm not his owner, but the owner will be holding the food. And we'll wean him off of food eventually. But in the beginning, I really want to get his recall super solid. Good job. job. That was minimal guidance. Minimal guidance. I don't know how wide the, um, the camera angle is, but Sky is on the other side of this gate over there, just like staring at me like I've betrayed her because they haven't eaten dinner yet. Yay! Good job. I really hope you can see this. I'm going to post it anyway, even if you can't. last one. And I dropped some kibble into my stove. That's great. Hashtag life of a dog trainer. You might be a dog trainer if you got kibble in your stove top.